Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. The fire danger right now on the ranch and really throughout the west is just extreme. Um, there's several massive wildfires burning in the region, so it'd really be irresponsible to be out shooting today. And, and it's just so easy to, to spark a wildfire when, when conditions are this dry. So I really thought it was a good opportunity to talk about a couple of really fascinating old workhorse Winchesters that have been here on the ranch and in the family for generations. We wouldn't be shooting these anyway because the, the uh, 44 rimfire or Henry cartridges haven't been available for a long time. And we'll talk a little more about that later. But what we're looking at today is a couple of Winchester Model 1866s, or more commonly referred to as Yellow Boys. Now, what's really fascinating about these rifles is that they're in just the condition they were when they were put away, probably at least a hundred years ago. So we really have a time capsule here to look at what old workhorse ranch Winchesters, particularly these, these brass frames, should look like if they've been untouched, uncleaned, unmolested in any way since they were being used. So, so stick around and, and, and this should be really fascinating. We'll, we'll take some closer looks at what the frames should look like, what the finish should look like on them if they haven't been cleaned up like so many of them have. These particular rifles spent uh, decades in just an old wooden cabinet in one of the garages here on the ranch. Um, it's kind of fascinating. These, these tags you see on them are from an old local creamery where, where one of our uh, ancestors was selling uh, milk back in the day and probably when these came into possession. Um, on the back it says it has a name Morris on them. We'll, we assume that that's who they came from because there's several other of these tags on the older rifles with names on them and you can see or i can see very very lightly scratched in as a rh morris on the buttstock of this one so um these were put away with these tags on them long ago and we know that the tags are pretty old because they have the phone number printed on them phone numbers 638 and that's it just 638 so stick around. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take a little closer look at these so that we you can really see what the finish should look like. Um, this this third model here, years ago, I, I put a bore light in it and I couldn't see any light through it, so I ran some some patches through it and it actually had just a little wad of newspaper in there, probably to keep stuff out of the bore while it was being stored. And this fourth model here, it's got all sorts of cobwebs and stuff in the bore. So we'll t when we go down and take a look at. Uh, what the finish should look like. Maybe we'll run a few patches through it and and uh, see what the bore looks like. It kind of looks like there's some pretty decent rifling and, and a decent bore in this old girl. So, so stick around. This this should be a, a fascinating episode for you if you if you really have an interest in in uh, brass frame Winchesters and what they really should look like if they hadn't been cleaned up and 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 molested like so many of them have. So let's take a closer look at these two yellow boys. This first one in front is a, a third model manufactured in 1870. The uh, second one in back is a fourth model manufactured in 1883, I believe. So we'll take a closer look, uh, see what the finishes look like, and then take a look at some of the differences between this third model and, and fourth model yellow boy. So here's more of a close up of these two yellow boys. There's even a, a Henry cartridge down there below, just for reference. First thing we'll notice in the difference of these two rifles is this third model has a brass crescent butt plate, has a kind of a flip up trap door in the butt for the cleaning supplies. Fourth model has a, a steel butt plate with a slide up door that's much more indicative of the 73 and later models. As we move up the frames of these two rifles, next thing we'll notice is the, the placement and type of rear sights. Now this third model just has a, a dovetail right towards the back of the barrel with kind of a a v-notch rear sight while the the fourth model has the dovetail further up and, and kind of a sporting rear sight that's missing an elevator unfortunately next we'll notice that and this is of course a factory thing but uh, this third model has what will, most collectors would consider to be uh, uh, saddle wear and I've seen a lot of conjecture from collectors about uh, where that comes from how it was carried on the saddle to, to cause that wear and that's kind of a fascinating subject for me and when maybe we'll do an episode on it uh, by itself later on because this ranch originally its focus was raising cavalry mounts um, for the US Army back in the day so there's a lot of 
old saddles and tack around here we can look through and see and maybe we can even talk to a few of the old timers that have spent their lives in the saddle and get their opinion of saddle wear. Next as we move up these rifles we'll see that this third model has a brass forend uh, cap whereas the fourth model has a steel forend cap again that's much more indicative of the later model Winchesters. This fourth model has a Rocky Mountain front sight, while the third model, unfortunately, is missing a front sight. I'm hoping my friends on the Winchester Arms Collectors Association forum will watch this and, and maybe give me an, uh, some definitive answers on, on what kind of an elevator I need and what kind of a front sight I need to finish these guns off. Um, I'm not a real brass frame expert, and, and some of the best experts in the world are on that forum, so I'm hoping I can get that, uh, get that kind of answered and get these things finished off. So stick around now, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at uh, these things really up close to see what the frames should look like up close when they, when they haven't been cleaned and, and artificially aged. Then we'll run some patches through this fourth model and see what the bore looks like. And then we'll talk a little bit more about this, uh, these Henry rimfire cartridges. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the differences in these two 1866s. The uh, third model's on the right and the fourth model's on the left. Now, I talked about the differences in the rear sights and, and where they were dove, dovetailed in. and That's kind of showing a close-up of those differences. As we get up to where we eject, uh, we can see there's some subtle differences in the bolts and on the ejectors. Notice the, the green um, on, the, on the brass. That's some powder residue. That's a pretty good indication that it wasn't cleaned after the last time these things were fired, probably a hundred years or more ago. And then uh, I talked a little bit about the knurling on the hammers, so there's the differences there. So as promised, uh, we'll get this thing set up and in this fourth model with all the cobwebs and whatnot and the bore, we're gonna clean it out and just see how that bore looks. Okay, so the telltale sign if a, if a brass frame is original and hasn't been cleaned and polished up, are these little metal flake appearance that, that show up um, on the finish on the receiver. Now, if those are there, then it has not been polished or cleaned, or at least not in the last 100 years or so. What I'm told is, from, from the experts on brass frames, is that it takes a long, long, long time for that appearance to develop on the receiver and it's really easy to to antique the finish after they've been um, polished up to darken them but to get that that flaky appearance just takes a, a long 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 time so this, this one's a really good example of what they should look like when they're original and hopefully you can, you can make that out here here it is um, under the carrier or over the carrier I should say and even if I turn it up you can see on the on the carrier itself that same kind of a finish showing up so hopefully this will give you a good idea of what a bore looks like on a rifle that's just been put away um, for a century or so it's kind of hard to get it focused in one point so I'll just kind of run the focus in and out and we're gonna run a couple patches through it and just see uh, what it looks like. Okay, so we're just gonna run a couple of dry patches down this. We've got the, the rifle turned upside down so that all that crud and stuff that's in that barrel falls out um, onto this paper towel and we kind of see if there's anything interesting in there, although I don't think there really is. And We'd rather have it fall out than into the bottom of the receiver. So let's grab a patch here. And here we go. First time we've run one down here in a hundred years. Yep, just spider webs, cobwebs, kind of, kind of brown. Okay, just for the fun of it, we'll run another one down. And of course that one's much, much cleaner. That's, that's pretty nice. Now let's take a look and see what that board looks like now. I, I think there's some decent rifling in this old girl. Well there you go. 
first cleaning in probably a hundred years. Um, I did end up running some some uh, solvent down it and a few more patches and whatnot and give it a, a better cleaning. But uh, it cleaned up pretty decent. It, you know, I, I really expected a lot more pitting in there. It's just kind of a light frosting. The, the lands aren't uh, real strong. It's been shot quite a little bit, but it's a whole lot better bore than what I would have expected. Well, in a previous episode, we talked about making uh, 44 rimfire or 44 Henry cartridges here in the shop and getting tooled up for it. This is a machine we would use to do that. This old uh, turret lathe, just kind of a ticket to... to uh, make that brass. We're uh, still working on getting some of the tooling, still kind of figuring out how to how to make the dies to make that rimfire cartridge, but uh, that ought to be pretty fascinating. One of these days maybe we'll uh, have an episode, we'll show you how to turn brass that looks something like that into cartridges that look like something like that. And then maybe we uh, go out and actually do a little shooting with a 66. Well, what a pair of old workhorse ranch Winchesters. If you have questions about these 66s, or any other model for that matter, don't hesitate to get on the Winchester Arms Collectors Association forum. There's some great guys there that will answer just about any question you could bring to them. It better yet, join up with the association. You'll never regret that you did. So, uh, thanks again for watching today. Um, if you like the channel, please like, subscribe, comment. We'd really like to grow the channel. We sure appreciate uh, all the folks and all the comments that we've been getting. Um, until next time, I guess, and that uh, happy trails from the Cinnabar. <laughs>